Hi. Well, because it was requested, I'm going to talk a little bit about polonium halos. So a fellow a few years back named Robert Gentry found these minerals that had an interesting feature to them. They had a radioactive decay halo in them, and what was interesting about that is that the radioactive nuclide, which was polonium-210, has a half-life of 138 days. Well, it takes a little bit longer than that for most rocks to form, so he concluded, this must be evidence of God's creation, and what we're looking at are the first rocks that God ever made. Well, a few geologists went back to his site, and they examined the rocks that he had taken, and they came, with, they came up with a very different conclusion. I'll try to share the basic idea of it with you. So, the rocks he, he was looking at were Precambrian. They're very old rocks, part of what's known as the Grenvillian terrain in Canada. And this was before there was really life on Earth. So, what he was looking at was a granite. And this is going to be our granite for now. Now, what he said was that he went to the granite and took minerals from it. But based on the minerals that he got, such as biotite and fluoride, it's clear that he didn't get them from the granite. Instead, what the, the mine is there for, the reason that it's mined is because there are these calcite dikes, calcium-rich dikes, rather, that have a lot of calcite and fluoride and biotite and some other minerals. So we'll just draw one of those in. So the dikes are cutting through the rock, something like that. So when he took his sample, he took it from the dike and not from the granite. So that's his first problem. He's not looking at the right kind of rock. Well, it still leaves the question, how do you get a radioactive nuclide with such a short half-life in these minerals? Let's, even if they are formed later, still this presents a problem, and it's a very interesting problem. The mine where these rocks were found was a uranium mine. They mined uranium. And uranium, when it decays, goes through a dozen or so steps, breaking down from uranium-238 to lead-206. Now, one of these stages is polonium-210. Another one of these stages, which comes before it, is radon-222. So here's what happened. When this intruded, it was intruding through the granite, and that allowed for some of this liquid to be mixed in. So you have the uranium in the dike. Now let's say you get a little mineral right there, and that mineral has your uranium. Now the uranium is stable for a while, and then it breaks down. It decomposes, and you get a particle emission that eventually breaks down to radon. Again, radon is a gas, so it's allowed to move up to a new location in the dike. And it can move through this because rocks aren't strictly solid. There's, there's separation planes between uh, minerals where you have two grains that aren't perfectly melded together. You have situations where there's cracks in the rock. Um, when the veins cool, then it can be just like anything that cools off. You can create some space there. And it's also worth noting that this is all happening during what's known as an orogeny or a mountain building event. So there's all kinds of tectonic things going on that can shift this around. So all that's really important from that is that the radon can move from its original location where it came from the uranium up to a new location and it can live out the rest of its life, which for radon is about 38 days, I think, in this new mineral. Now the radon eventually breaks down, and you get a polonium halo 
in this mineral without the uranium. It's a very interesting story, but it's not evidence of instantaneous creation.